Are you looking to install a solar water heating system for your house? Behind me is the evacuated tube solar water heating system. It gets its name from these tubes that are connected to this water tank that stores the hot water. Watch this video to find out more about this solar water heating system. Hi, I'm Nick Moyama from Property Norma. First things first, why are these black tubes called evacuated tubes? That's because inside each tube, there's a vacuum. Think of it like the air inside each tube is evacuated, leaving only a vacuum. So that's how the evacuated tube name came about for this solar water heating system. The vacuum acts as an insulation layer, preventing excessive heat loss to the atmosphere. Because of that, the outer glass tube is cool to the touch, while the inner one, which we'll talk about in just a moment, can get seriously hot from solar energy. The material that makes these tubes is called borosilicate glass, which can withstand differences in temperature without fracturing. The number of tubes will depend on the size of the tank. For this 200 liter tank, I counted 20 evacuated tubes, while for this 300 liter tank, 30 tubes are used. But the number of evacuated tube collectors will vary with the design from each solar water heating company. Generally, there are two types of evacuated tube solar water heaters, the low pressure and high pressure systems. A simple low pressure system consists of the main tank, assistant tank, evacuated pipe collectors, and a steam release pipe. Low pressure systems heavily rely on gravity for the flow of water. Cold water flows through the inlet pipe and into the assistant tank. It's a small tank located at the top or at the side of the main hot water tank. It has a ball valve that controls the flow of water into the tank. If cold water falls below the level of the ball valve, more water enters inside the tank. When the tank gets full, the ball valve stops the flow of water from entering into the tank. This is an automatic process. Once cold water enters the tank, it flows to the evacuated glass tubes. Inside each evacuated tube, you'll find an outer and an inner glass layer. As you can see, I'm touching the outer glass layer. Now, between these two layers, there's a vacuum. During the day, the evacuated tubes are exposed to the sun. The inner glass tube has a selective absorber coating, making it absorb solar energy more easily and quickly. The sun's radiation hits the tubes, which in turn hit the cold water inside. The vacuum prevents excessive heat loss to the atmosphere. But you might be wondering, how does hot water make its way to the tank when the evacuated tubes are located below it? Well, hot water is less dense than cold water. As the water gets heated up, the warm or hot water slowly rises above cold water. This phenomenon is called convection and causes hot water to find its way to the tank. This also ensures that any cold water is left inside the tubes to get heated up by the sun. Now, the main water tank acts like a thermos flask. It is insulated using a high-density polyurethane foam. This insulation helps keep the water hot between 72 to 80 hours at most. The outlet pipe then releases the hot water, which is connected to the hot water piping system of your house. When temperatures get too hot inside the tank, water can reach boiling point, which generates steam. So the work of the steam release pipe is to get rid of excess steam, keeping the tank safe from exploding. High pressure systems work differently. A visual way to differentiate between these two types is the presence of an assistant tank to low pressure systems. High pressure systems usually don't have that assistant tank. Instead, they consist of the main tank, evacuated tube collectors, copper heat pipes with an alcohol liquid, a manifold, and a steam release outlet. Here's how the system works. The sun's radiation hits copper heat pipes 
located inside the evacuated tubes. The heat pipes have an alcohol liquid inside. They are also sealed, meaning no water can flow through them. This means there's no direct contact between water and the evacuated tubes like in the low pressure system. Now, because of the vacuum inside the evacuated tubes, the alcohol reaches its boiling point much lower than under normal atmospheric conditions. This causes the alcohol liquid to vaporize faster, turning it into gas. The gas travels up the tube because it is less dense. And because the gas is very hot, it hits the bulb at the tip of the heat pipe. That heat is transferred to a common manifold, which is where other bulbs from each evacuated tube are connected to. The manifold then heats up the water inside the tank. From there, hot water is released through the outlet pipe and any excess steam is released through the steam release outlet. So, should you go for the low pressure system or the high pressure system? Low pressure systems tend to be cheaper than high pressure systems. That's because they have no moving parts, rely on gravity for the flow of water and require less maintenance in their life cycle. However, they don't offer sufficient hot water pressure unless they're installed very high on your roof. Another thing, low pressure systems unsuitable where water is pumped into the system. That's why they are called low pressure systems. Too much water pressure can cause the evacuated tubes to explode. Also, in case a tube breaks or gets damaged, they're harder to replace. That's because of the presence of water inside the tubes. All the water in the system has to be drained before repairing any broken glass tubes. On the other hand, high pressure systems offer higher hot water pressure. They also work well with water pumps installed in your house. Remember, there's no direct contact between the evacuated tubes and water. This means in some models, hot water tanks can be installed below your roof, for example. Only the evacuated tube collectors are left exposed to the sun. This allows your roof to look neater. This feature also makes it easier to replace a tube in case it breaks because there's no water inside the tube. All in all, high pressure systems cost more than the low pressure ones. However, because they provide higher hot water pressure, they offer a major advantage. So choosing between the two models boils down to your budget and your hot water needs. Usually, the smallest capacity is 100 liters. This can serve one to two people per day. The common assumption is one person using approximately 50 liters of hot water per day. That's why one to two people can comfortably use a 100 liter sized tank. Other capacities include 150, 200, 240, 300, and 360 liter capacities. A 300 liter tank can serve four to six people per day. That's 50 liters per person multiplied by six, which equals 300 liters. Moving on, the price of the solar water heating system is quoted against the capacity of hot water you want. In short, the bigger the capacity, the more the cost. Since I live in Kenya, I did a Google search on the price of evacuated tube solar water heating systems in Kenya. Do a similar search and you'll find different price ranges depending on where you live and the prices of each company. Always ask if the price includes installation because these evacuated tube systems require installation on your house. I hope you've learned something about evacuated tube solar water heating systems. They're pretty popular here in Kenya because we get a lot of sunlight for most months during the year and we also don't experience extreme winter conditions. Have you installed either of these systems in your house? Please share your experience in the comments below. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.